Hello, welcome to The Freak Show. Bumpy McSquigums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I start up my coverage of Last Dream, of the original this time around. Ladies and gentlemen, it is part of my Throwback Thursday initiative where I play old school games, games that look or feel old school, just essentially classics or even new classics. Like I said, games that look old school that might be new. Last Dream fits in kind of two different categories because it's not like a 90s or an 80s or even an early 2000s classic. It did release in 2014, but it's a little bit of an older game, and it definitely feels like one of the classic RPGs. So there you have it. And I already did a little bit of coverage of Last Dream, World Unknown, which is the sequel to this. But I figured it's probably a better idea for us to play through this first, so we know what's going on with the story and the characters and everything else. And hopefully we can like transmit the save file or something along those lines to the future game. Let's play on the Gold Hope the Dream. We'll see if it comes to fruition. So once again, it is Last Dream by White Giant RPG Studios. It released on March 13th, 2014. I'm going to let you guys see what the opening sequence looks like, and then we'll hop in and we'll get started. A lone man finds himself in a vast alien world. Befriending three local villages, he will attempt to discover how he arrived in this strange world. That is a very odd choice for font, but it works, I guess. His sole wish is to find his way home. The good thing is it's at least slow enough that it's okay. Alright, there you go. That was uh, the intro. Again, not too much revealed, not nothing, so it's good. Gave us a good starting point, and let's hop in and go. Alright, so we get to do our character selection. And I think we're going to try to do the same thing that we did last time. So we're going to go with the knight. And yes, we're going to go with this. Okay. Confirm character selection. Yep. This is not going to be knight. Oh, that's right. We have to do it this way. This is going to be Mieux Tanat, as we all know. Uh, from if you guys watch the coverage of the other game of the uh, the sequel, you'll know that you Tanat is going to be our I guess main character this time around. Had I known, I would have made it myself. You Tanat, you Tanat. All right, our next character was dun, 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 dun. it was um, a hunter, and it was. I believe the wife. If I am not wrong, it was good old Kimira. I M M I A R A A R A. Little fawns there. It's, it's fun. All right, and our next one was the old white mage. Yes, and she was not known as white mage. No, for she was known as the one, the true dog of our eye, Katie. There we go, good old Katie. And finally, the Black Mage, the most powerful of all. That's right. Who else could it be but myself, of course, Bumpy. We have to be in here somewhere. I should have been the first character chosen, but this is cool. I can go with this. Would you like to change the default costumes for your party members? Would I? Yes. Okay, next, uh, recolor yes uh, you're fine and I yes all right so we're exactly the way we were in the next one. <laughs> oh, you're so happy please customize your gaming experience through the following options you can change these options at any point during the game encounter rate standard game difficulty normal Save option. We're going with save anywhere in case I have to stop an episode at a specific point. I'd rather be able to save anywhere. I will not save scum, ladies and gentlemen. If I make a mistake, you will see the mistake, and I will... I'll probably try only to save at either, like, just random different spots, like... Like, oh, that's a save spot. I'll save at the save spots, but otherwise, it'll only be between episodes. So it'll be kind of like this, but with the ability to stop anywhere. So, it's, you know, it's, it's fine. It's okay. It's okay. Include the cutscenes? Absolutely. Duh. Of course we want the cutscenes. And yes, we do want to watch the intro. I'm sorry, guys. I had a fidget in my chair. That's what all the creaking's all about. 
Hey kids, I'll be right back. I'm going to collect some more firewood. See if you can count back from 60, Katie, and then we'll uh, we'll make more s'mores. He's on a beach looking for firewood. Well, I guess driftwood. I guess it's a thing. Well, weather turned bad real quick. Better head back. Looks like a sudden storm has arisen. Yes, yes it has. Oh my god! Uh, I don't understand. I don't remember any of this. Hey, there's a helmet. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. What is this? Understand? Uh, uh, what? Help! Could it be? Where are you? Oh, dang! Look, look, it's it's like pseudo me, but uh oh. I know where I am. Where do you think you are? Or where do you think are you? What? I I guess the way I was. It's fine. What? Must swim back to shore. Please help me. The water burns my throat. My only regret is leaving my kids fatherless. Ow. Maybe don't scream in underwater. It's it's not good. Good, he still breathes. Uh, my head. I think he's gone. Is someone there? Help me, please. You're lucky to be alive. I need to get you back to Oakwood. Can you stand? Uh, I th I think so. You didn't say anything about walking. Ah! Oh, we stepped on a sea urchin. No! I need to rest. How much further is it to this town? Oakwood, you said? I'm getting close now. It's only another five miles. Alright. I guess I can make it that far. Five miles is close? What? Yes, let's keep moving. These woods can be dangerous. Oh no, this is a bat creature. The hell was that? I don't know, let's get out of here. No kidding. Come, it's almost morning. We're almost there. What the hell? Two suns? Where am I? Calm down, I know it's confusing, but I don't believe you're ready to hear the truth yet. Let's just get back to town. Calm down? You've got to be kidding me. And as I see it, you don't have much choice but to trust me. Fine. Let's move. Run the other way! Oh, no. Okay. And so Mutanot arrived in Oakwood. Our story starts a year after that fateful day. In the previous year, Mutanat has befriended three locals who help in weapons, training, and beast hunting in the sewer and around town. M Mutanat still has little idea where he is, and Dante refuses to reveal what information he seems to have. The journey is started by what appears to be a small event, the kidnapping of Dante's daughter. And so the four reluctant warriors, Mutanat and the three locals, start their journey not knowing what awaits them. Play through a short tutorial? Eh, I don't know if I want to do that now, but yes. It, it, it went real long last time. We'll skip over some of the stuff that we probably know, so just, it's fine. Josh, hey. Nearly all game settings are controlled via the settings menu. All of the settings are saved when you exit and will automatically be reapplied when you continue playing. Uh, let's start by learning to configure in-game controls, remap game, blah, blah, blah. I don't need any of this stuff. Choose keyboard mapping. Uh, keyboard mapping makes sense. Gamepad mapping, yes. Screen resolution, music, uh-huh. Window skin, auto dash, fast forward. Furthermore, you can also change the fast forward speed. That's fine. Uh, direct input gamepad compatibility is used for older gamepads that don't support X input. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. 
To aid in your journey, you can quickly open the map menu by holding cancel for approximately one second while on the world map. Cool. I think that's enough about screen resolutions and in-game controls. Why don't you try moving around? Use your mapped in-game controls to move up, down, left, and right. Okay. So go to... The different things, I guess. And then talk to him. Very good. Did you know that you can move very quickly by dashing? Hold dash. Show me your dashing skills by moving from the red circle to the blue diamond in less than three seconds. Very good! Yeah. Another important control is cancel, which is mapped to the X button on your keyboard by default. In addition, blah, 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 blah. Uh, automatic feature can be reset through F12. Those are all the controls. Proceed north. All right. Sorry, guys. We're going to breeze through this a little bit. Like, uh, I normally like to go through all the tutorials, but the second game, uh, Last Dream World Unknown, does a very, very long tutorial. And most of the stuff is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, options, how to change your screen resolution. It's nice that it's there for people who might struggle or have um, issues with it or problems figuring it out. But it's all pretty basic. Uh, most people should be able to know it. But again, like I said, it's good that it's there. But if it's stuff that we can skip, we will skip it. If you learned about the basic, basics of movement, let's move on to something a bit more exciting. You'll need to be well stocked to survive in your journeys, treasures around town, and dungeons visit. Uh, I've created a treasure chest for you. Why don't you open it? All right, so go over to it and press the button, and there it is. Got five monies for it. Sweet. Very good. Unprotected. Dungeons, lock chest. Therefore, you will need to pick the lock to earn its contents. Um, if you have a thief in your party, you'll be able to pick without ever arousing suspicion. However, without your thief, you can be caught. Uh, without a thief, your chance gets to get caught by the city guard starts at 1% and increases by 1 for each... Oh, okay. Keep in mind that your chance to get caught is shared across all towns. Oh, therefore, if you open five chests in Oakwood, then if you try to open a chest in another town, it'll be uh, there's a chance to be caught will be 6%. Got it. chance to be caught is known to you as your wanted level, and it can be reset for a price at the Thieves' Guild hidden somewhere in Terra. Cool. Create another chest. This one is locked. All right. Boom. Attempting to pick the lock. Lock is picked. Cool. Potion. Good to know. Very good. You'll notice that a textbook display. Attempting to pick the lock. Uh-huh. Remember, that if you have a thief in your party, you will never arouse the suspicions. Without a thief, we'll run the risk of having to fight the guards. All right. Got it. You're ready to continue to the next lesson. Please proceed north. See, that was a useful one. That one was a little bit more of things that you might need to know that you wouldn't know otherwise. You learned about acquiring treasures, but you can't use items you gain from treasure chests without understanding how to use them through the main menu. It's an in-game menu, upper left, menu options, uh, top options, items, yep. Equipment, it's pretty self-explanatory. Skills, you can also use your skill points to view, you can learn new ones, and you can equip the skills to skill slots. The fourth is level up, you can assign the ability points or the AP to your characters when they earn a level, it's fine. I like many games that have predefined parameters, we actually get to choose which ones that we want to upgrade the stats and things, which is nice. You can freely distribute the AP between the various parameters. Uh, the fifth option is Bestiary. You can see all enemies. If you engage in a battle, if you have a hunter, you can see all the parameters of those enemies. Uh, battle macros. This is a really cool feature. It allows you to, like, a lot of times you're going to get into these games and you'll be at a point where you're grinding or you're fighting stuff that's pretty easy to deal with. Even if you take some damage, you're just going to spam your attack, 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 right? All four characters are going to attack. And that's going to be most of it, and then maybe like once every five battles you'll throw a heal. You can actually make a battle macro that is all five attacks. You press one button, it does the whole thing. Cool, cool stuff. Alright, next up we have the collections. You can see all the data on treasures collected, equipment synthesized, fish caught, puzzles completed, buried treasures found, excavated, chambers opened, locations visited, and more. The other option is achievements here. You'll find additional challenges that can be completed for those players who want the extra challenge. The ninth is rows. Here you can choose, uh, you have a front, a medium, and a back, or a front, middle, and back row. The front row is more likely to get hit by a certain percentage. The back row is the least likely to be hit. The middle row is kind of in the middle. Makes sense. And you guys can pause and read any of this stuff if I'm rambling or I'm wrong, which is possible. I'm going off of what we learned in the second game. So some of the stuff from the second game might not be implemented in the first game. So eh. scrolling down further, you'll see more options in the menu. Uh, game options, this will allow you to change all the game options, which are set at the beginning. Party, it allows you to change the order your characters appear. Okay. 
Uh, the twelfth option is settings. Here you can change stuff like screen resolution, all that other stuff. The tutorial, you can see this again. Uh, cutscenes. Uh, if you have cutscenes turned on, you can rewatch all of the in-game cutscenes. Okay. Maps makes sense. Camp. Uh, the sixteenth option. This will allow you to use camping, I believe, while on the world map, and you can use it with bags, tents, and cottages. You get HP from bags and tents. And you get HP from cottages, but you only get MP from cottages if it's the same as the second game. And again, note that camping only works on the world map. And finally, save with the save anywhere option, which we do have. It is available anywhere in the game. We'll, like I said, we'll use it primarily to end an episode. And then we'll load that save as a start of the next episode. Otherwise, I'll be using maybe occasional quick saves, but mostly probably location saves, like where they have the actual like tree of life and stuff like that. I hope that brief uh, synopsis of the main menu was helpful. You can now proceed to the next area to continue the tutorial. Alright. By the way, when you, when you spend skill points to acquire passive skills, you don't need to equip them. Yes, that was another thing I was going to mention. I'm glad that they reminded us. Now that you have had a brief summary of all the main menu options, you will have the option to explore the full tutorial menu. Would you like to explore the tutorial menu? I actually don't think so very well. If you ever change your mind, you can use the tutorial menu option. Proceed north. Yeah, since it's always there, I don't feel like we need to. If we ever need to go back to it, we can. Take care on your journey wherever it may lead you. If you guys want a little bit more of the tutorial, a bit more in depth, my first episode of Last Dream World Unknown is quite long, but I go through like 98, 95% of the tutorial. I skip like one or two things that seem kind of silly. So, yeah, that's that's the thing. All right, so let's go to the town. Let's see, I did this, right? Yeah. Mm. I moved the turbo button to one of my uh, middle mouse, not middle mouse, I'm sorry, uh, pushing my stick in, right analog stick to left analog stick. I was a little bit sad to find out that the right trigger and the left trigger seem to be disabled in the options menu for your gamepad configuration. That kind of sucks because I would have rather had like turbo as right trigger. But this works, it's way better than select. That's all I got to say. Alright, um, I'm not sure what we're supposed to be doing. Um, let's get to figuring it out. What does the sign say? To the town of Oakwood. There are many fish in the waters off the coast of this island. In fact, the waters nearly everywhere are teeming with fish. Here, why don't you take this fishing pole? Cool. It's old, but it should get the job done for small fish. It's a long-haired fisherman, huh? Also, here are some instructions on how to synthesize a better fishing pole. It might come in handy if you're able to find the ingredients. Cool. How do I fish? It's unusable. Why is it unusable? Can I equip it? No, it doesn't look like it's equipable. Huh. Hello, back from hunting monsters already? No? Oh, my mistake. Well, good luck with your hunting. How do I... How do I fish? I want to fish! They didn't tell me that part. Well, maybe if we look at the uh, item, maybe it tells us how to use it. It just says unusable. It doesn't help me at all. Well, I assume down the road it'll probably teach us how. It's alright, so we need to go hunt monsters, apparently. I... Is there a... We should do this. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, so, oh, okay. All right, I get it. So this is our first person. He's on that. This is the second person. He's in that row. Third person. We can move her down to here, but that would be bad. Okay, that makes sense. I was wondering why it was spread this way. I'd be like, I want this dude in the middle here. I want her, like, over here. This guy there. Makes sense. Makes sense now. Um, battle macros. Mutanats macro one. Attack. Okay, Chimera's macro one, okay. 
makes sense. All right, so here we go. We have our, our first thing. Does the world map force us to attack? I, I feel like there's probably somebody we need to talk to before we do anything else. Like the guy that brought us here, maybe? Hmm. Well, we know that stealing from towns is probably not great. My grandmother is out tending the garden. I wonder when she'll be back. Possibly never. Well, I can't seem to steal the pitchfork there. What's going on over here? What's up, old guy? Hello there. Have you heard the latest rumors about Dante's daughter? No, I have not. Oh, you're... Oh, I hit... Yes, I'm sorry. No. I heard that Dante's daughter ran away from home. Then he hired some mercenaries to track her down and bring her home, but they never return. I wonder what happened to them. They're all dead. They're all dead. That's what happens when mercenaries don't come back. That or they got paid more not to bring her back. Also an option. I'm collecting large quantities of various monster remains. I'll buy all your monster remains if you let me. And I'll pay the same prices as any item shop. Nope. Ah, well, I don't have any right now. So that's, that's the main reason I'm not doing it. Also, I want to point out, we're level 1, we're not level 60, like we were in the other one. I remember when you first arrived here, and you were too weak to venture outside the town on the monsters. Instead, I had to go down the well into the sewer to battle the spiders. Can I do that now? Heck yeah. Let's kill some spiders, that sounds fun. And by fun, oh! By fun, I mean not fun. Slime emerged! Spider emerged! Alright, let's do this. We're gonna macro it up. Ha! Super dodgy. Right, I feel like we're not winning this fight right now, so maybe we need to be a little bit more cautious with our uh, moves here. Uh, okay. oh, you have no skills either. Ooh, this could get messy. I feel like we made a terrible mistake. We also have no equipment. <laughs> this is bad. Run away! We should probably figure out what we're supposed to do before we do bad things like that. Oh, that was rough. What's up, kid? You reek, get away from me. I do. I was down in a well and I got beat up by a bunch of spiders. I'm a little embarrassed. Alright, can we steal all your equipment, buddy? No? Alright, let's talk. Your stench is overpowering. Get out of here before you stink up my shop. I feel like, uh... Should really bathe more often. I feel like we've done something bad. Everybody seems to not like us anymore. I don't know how to fix this problem. So I will be frank. No one will take interest in you as long as she can see through your... As long as she cannot see through your wretched stench. Oh man, that's not good. What have we done? Is there... Uh, I'm old, but I can still smell get out of here. No. No. No, I've made a terrible mistake. I'm, I'm being I'm being punished. I don't... I, I really don't understand what the deal is with the stench. Oh, okay, yes. Okay, whew. That was scary. Alright, so you can jump into water to clean yourself. What in the world? That's weird. Welcome to my shop. It's fairly poor. We have a bunch of money. So we can buy some stuff. Alright, so here's another thing that I didn't go over in this one. <sighs> Alright, um... If it's the same as it was, and it is. Okay, if it's the same as it was in the other one. They explained it sort of like this. The, the axe, the the axe, the spear, and the sword, for instance. Okay, I'm assuming the dagger is probably even more so. So, also it looks like we only have certain things that we can use with different people. Alright, so, here it is. The axe is the heaviest weapon, and it deals the most damage. The problem is, if you don't have enough accuracy, you're going to miss with the axe. So, you need to have a high enough accuracy to counterbalance the weight, therefore you hit every time you swing the axe. Otherwise, if you don't have enough accuracy, you're going to miss, so you won't do any damage. The sword is the middle ground. It's a well-balanced device. It does a medium amount of damage. Its weight is medium. You don't need as high of accuracy to use a sword as you do an axe. The spear, you need very little accuracy, but it also does the least amount of damage. So axe, 
uh, requires the highest amount of accuracy but deals the most damage. The spear requires the least amount of accuracy, does the least amount of damage, and the sword is the middle ground. I guess the dagger is somewhere in there as well. Alright, so we're going to go and we're going to get a bow. We're going to get a couple of staves. We're going to get an axe from Mutana. And I think a sword. Nope, oh, that's it. That's it. Okay, so now we're going to equip these. Uh, we'll just optimize at this point. We need to get some equipment, armor, and whatnot. That way, we don't look like fools next time we face off against spiders or spiders. Um, worn ble blessed, worn blessed plate, uh, breastplate. I don't know. It's just we each person can use a different ones. So we're gonna use the worn breastplate times two, uh, the torn robe times two. I don't know if we can use the axe and a shield. I'm going to buy it. It might be a mistake, but we'll buy it for now. The tattered cloak, an old tattered cloak that might fall apart at any second. I don't know. Previous owner may have had lice. That's not great. Worn gloves with multiple holes in them. Rusty gauntlets. Um... I'm really kind of buffing up our front line right now, so if you guys are wondering wh why I chose to put the equipment where I did, that's why I'm really focusing on our front line, make, making them a bit stronger. Alright, so with that being said, and all that, we're going to go, I don't know if we have enough for items, I'm hoping that we do. For like at least a single healing potion or something, bye, nope. Well, this may be a very, very, very short run, folks. We're going to try to get down in the well and kill the spiders this time around. Hopefully we can get ourselves some trophies and not die a horrible death and maybe make it to a treasure chest or something. Because that did not go well last time. But we have a little bit of armor this time around and we have weapons. So we're not punching things in the face. So that's going to be good. We got 100 coins. That should help us a little bit. All right. Alright, let's see if we got this this time. Alright, we're gonna fight him. Fight him. Let's see, we still don't have any skills yet. Alright. So really it's just gonna be the attack all the way through. There we go, that's much better. And we did tank a bit better there too. Okay, yeah, we've got this. So we put ourselves in a little bit of a rough spot there, but it's gonna be okay. Yeah! Get some. The amazing difference uh, having equipment versus not having equipment. <laughs> I, I don't know what the reeking thing was all about. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Gaining stuff. We see four drops. We got some goo and spider carapace. I don't know what drops are. That was not covered. I think we can probably survive at least one more battle. But I also could be very, 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 very wrong. Alright, yeah, we got this. Easy, breezy, beautiful. Oh, we missed. Our axe coming into play there. I'm not sure why he's crying right now or has a water drop over his head. Hopefully that's a status effect that goes away. We're nearly to the next level. I'm hoping that we're going to be okay here. At the end of it all. door is locked. However, boom, we got ourselves a potion. Oh, he's still got whatever status effect is on him. Hmm. Or her, rather. Come here. Alright. Got some murder death killing going on here. Ooh, the back line taking a hit. Not cool. Hoping that we can gain the next level. I want to see if we actually gain HP when we level up. That would make my day. Oh yeah, the door's locked. Do, do, do. Antidote. Is it a poison that 
Kimira is affected by? Do we have a status thing? Well, I think we can use skills here. Uh, learn skills. We need 40. What does cure do? Cure. Uh, base healing, 30. Okay, so that is a heal. We need 40. Alright, that's cool. We're getting there. We're getting there slowly. It's getting, it's getting done. Alright, so some spiders decided to come out and play. We're going to say good day. I don't know what the sweat is for again. Uh, maybe it's because the HP is so low they're getting nervous. That could be a thing. Saying, hey, you know, I don't, I don't like the situation that I'm in. What's going on? Save me don't let me die. Alright, we hit 100%. 9 SP from battle. Taunts to receive 4 drops. 3 spider carapace and some antidote. We did level up. Nobody managed to actually heal from this point. Uh, level up. There's 40 AP. Is that for each person? Or how does that work? Alright, so I feel like we're going to go... One there. Do one there. One there. One there. One there. Okay, so I decided to upgrade my HP, my attack, my defense, my accuracy. What does agility do again? Oh, um, no. I don't remember what agility does. Ah, I guess I get one point in agility. I wish I remember what it did. Oh, I just canceled it. My bad. No, I didn't. It stayed. Okay. Alright. Oh, so each person gets 40. Alright, that's good. I wasn't sure if it was shared amongst all of them or what the deal was. That makes sense then. Um, okay, well then I'm going to get a little bit more into defense, a little bit more into HP, and we'll call it a day. Level up, Chimera. We'll go one into HP, one into MP, attack, defense, agility, two, accuracy, one... And preemptive two. Preemptive three. Oh, that's okay. Alright, Katie. Gonna go with a bunch of MP. Three points in MP. Three points in int. I'm gonna go one into HP. Uh, magic defense and pre. and another magic defense. And another magic defense. I like her to be uh, defended against magic, as I'm sure you guys could have gathered from, you know, magic defense and whatnot. And when we're done doing the level ups, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for the first episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. We got a little bit of stuff going on. We got to see the smelliness of all. It was uh, weird, for lack of a better term. We're going to go one more into int, one into HP, one more into MP, one more into int, and that is going to do it. Alright, uh, skills, did we get enough? Let's see here. We have 29, we need 40. So we're not there yet. Either way, folks, that's going to do it for this first episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. The game, once again, is called A Last Dream. It's by White Giant RPG Studios. And it's uh, going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm really looking forward to playing this. I, I love me some old school classic RPG games. It's just something you can sit back, relax, and play. So this is kind of like a, some me time that I get to share with all of you. So hopefully you're cool with that. Anyway, folks, if you want more information about the game, where to get the game, information on the developer, or any of that wonderful fun stuff, it'll all be down below in the description of the video, as it always is. I will definitely be playing this next Thursday. I may sprinkle in a few more episodes each week. We'll see. Anyway, folks, until the very next episode, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you for stopping by The Freak Show, and I will see you later. <laughs>